Hello everyone, I am Phantom Haxer, and welcome to another episode of Roblox How To. In this episode, I am going to be going over the server to client architecture in Roblox. This video will require some knowledge about Roblox Studio. If this is your first time opening Roblox Studio, I have left a link to my studio introduction video in the description and in the video cards. And if you haven't already, please like and subscribe as it lets me teach scripting on Roblox to more people. Before I begin, here are the timestamps for today's video. And without further ado, let's get into today's video. Most users don't realize, but when you join a Roblox game, there are actually two separate versions of the same game running in the background. These are separated by the names server and client. The server is the manager of the game. It manages and replicates objects to users. The client or clients are the players that are connected to the game. The client cannot access the server directly and vice versa. This is called the server to client boundary. And this is where remote events and functions come into play. Now you may be wondering, why have the server to client boundary? And why need extra code to replicate things that you can replicate without the server to client boundary? Well, the reason is simple. Exploiters. Exploiters are users that use cheats in your game to gain advantage over regular users. The server to client boundary helps prevent the clients from accessing the server and replicating changes to everyone. Here is an example of what an exploiter could do to a game without the server to client boundary. You might notice that the exploiter can change the color on their client and it changes the color for everyone. Now here is an example of the exploiter trying to change the color on a game with the server to client boundary. You will notice that the color changes for the exploiter, but for everyone else, the color remains the same. This is because the server to client boundary prevented the color from replicating to all of the other clients. Now you may be wondering, if we have the server to client boundary, how do we replicate changes? This is where remote events and remote functions come into play. Remote events or remote functions let server-side scripts and client-side local scripts communicate with each other. While remote events and remote functions both allow communication between the server to client boundary, there is a major difference between the two. A remote event is designed for one-way communication, meaning it can only send information through one way, while a remote function is designed for two-way communication, meaning it can send information across the server to client boundary, then wait for a response from the other side. A remote event can be used by multiple methods depending on where you're communicating from and where to. In Roblox, calling a remote event is also known as firing the event, so I will be using the term firing instead of calling. Firing a remote event from the client to the server is done through the fire server method. Here is an example. Firing a remote event from the server to the client is done through the fire client method. Here is an example. Note that the first parameter for the fire client method should always be the player you are firing the remote event to. If you want to communicate from the server to all the clients, you would use the fire all clients method. Here is an example. Now you may be asking, how do you set up a function to run when the remote event is fired? If you are on the client, you can connect to the onClientEvent method. Here is an example. However, if you are on the server, you can connect to the onServerEvent method. Here is an example. Note that the first parameter sent over by the onServerEvent callback will always be the player that fired the event to the server. A remote function can be used either from client to server or server to client, but it should almost never be used as server to client via invoke client as it could potentially break or hang the server. Instead, for cases such as those, you should use a remote event. I have linked a great video from Slightnik who explained this in really good detail in the description. In Roblox, calling a remote function is also known as invoking it, so I'll be using the term invoke instead of call. Invoking a remote function from the client to the server is done through the invoke server method. Here is an example.
To set up a callback to run whenever the remote function is called, if you are on the server, you can connect to the onServer invoke callback. Here is an example. Remote functions and remote events can both help tremendously for the server to client model. However, there are some parameter limitations to both of them. Notably, mixed tables, meta tables, and non-replicated instances. Mixed tables are regular tables, but instead of containing a single type of key, they contain multiple types of keys. This is a problem for remote events and functions, as the only data indexed by the numbers will be passed. For example, if the server receives this color data table, it will only receive the keys 1 and 2, containing blue and yellow. And the keys color 1 and color 2, containing green and red, will not be passed. Tables that have a meta table, which in basic terms are more powerful tables, will not have their meta table passed through the remote event or function. For example, when the server receives this truck table, the table will only have the name property and not the num wheels property as the num wheels property is a part of the car meta table. If you do not understand meta tables, don't worry, I will do a video covering them when I get into the advanced section from my Roblox how-to scripting series. Non-replicated instances are instances that are only visible to the sender. For example, if the server tries to pass an object that is a descendant of server storage to the client, the client will receive nil as a parameter a server storage is only accessible and replicated to the server. Similarly, if a client creates a part and tries to pass it to the server, the server will receive nil as a parameter as the part is not replicated to the server. Now you know what the server to client architecture is in Roblox. If you are having any trouble with any of the material presented in this video, I have left a link in the description that will redirect you to the developer wiki and a link that will redirect you the source material for this video. Thank you for watching this episode of Roblox How To. I am Phantom Haxer and I will see you in the next episode. Have a great rest of the day.